So my brothers and sisters, as I said at the beginning, today we celebrate the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary. And it's one of the most important uh, uh, solemnities about her Blessed Mother. When a Blessed Mother appeared to St. Bernadette on February 11th, 1858, Bernadette asked her, what is your name? And our Blessed Mother said that I'm the Immaculate Conception. And uh, that was a confirmation about a belief that had already been there for a lot of years. Pope Pius the IX declared in 1854 already that our Blessed Mother, through a special grace, was preserved free from original sin, right from the moment when she was conceived in a mother Anna's womb. When Mary was conceived in the womb of Anna, she was preserved from uh, uh, the state of sin. It is part of the reason when the angel Gabriel came to tell her that God had chosen her as the mother of Jesus, the angel called her full of grace, that she was full of grace. She did not have a quarter grace, she didn't have half of the grace, but she was full of grace. So that is uh, a, a powerful statement to make about somebody, that she was full of grace. So she didn't have any sin because the grace was full. She was just uh, totally full of grace. When our ancestors, Adam and Eve, sinned against God, human nature was infected by sin. As part of God's plan to save humanity, he preserved our blessed mother, from the stain of sin, so that his son, who is all holy, all pure, all perfect, would find a worthy vessel that will receive her son here on earth when he came to save us. So the preservation of our blessed mother for a special mission started at the time of her conception in the womb of our mother, Anna. God was preparing her for a special mission and she had to be preserved from the state of sin. This, uh, this, uh, our belief in the Immaculate Conception is part of a wider belief within the Catholic faith of a provident God who plans, who provides for the future, who prepares his children for special assignments long before they're even born. Long before somebody is born, God has a plan and is putting the pieces together. So the belief in the Immaculate Conception is about a God who looks into the future, chooses people for special tasks, and equips <coughs> them with special abilities so that they can be able to fulfill the tasks that he has for them ahead of time. So there are several men and women in the Bible that God set aside and they appointed and anointed long before they were even born. Long before our Blessed Mother came into the, onto the scene, the Lord had told the prophet Jeremiah that before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So the Lord appointed and anointed the prophet Jeremiah way before Jeremiah dropped in his mother's womb. When we celebrate the Immaculate Conception, we're celebrating Mary being preserved by God from the stain of sin way ahead of time so that God's son, God's son would find a holy temple here when he came here on earth. And this is one of the greatest privileges or honors that a human being has ever been given. And it is what the psalmist that we had today and also what we had Mary proclaim in the, in the reading that was read in the gospel, that uh, the Lord has done great things for me. The Lord has done great things for me. One thing that we learn from this day of the Immaculate Conception is that when God wants to choose us, for some purpose in the world, he does not simply abandon us to our strength and to our wits to figure out how to go about the assignment. That's not the way how he does it. He has a plan for us 
and the grace that goes with it as well. We also learn today that uh, we continue to live in a world that is broken and fragmented, that is wounded by sin. That woundedness, the propensity to sin, is what we see in the wars and the conflicts of our world, in the massive corruption that we've witnessed in the world, the hatred that we see in the world, and in the various addictions that the world struggles with, all of that is all part of the woundedness that we inherited. And our first reading reminds us of an important thing. It reminds us that there is an ongoing battle between God and Satan, between the light and, the, and the darkness that started way back in the Garden of Eden. And that reading is also reminding us also this day that our Blessed Mother is part of God's grand plan to bring healing and to bring harmony and to bring victory in our lives, but also in our world as well. The closer we stay to our Blessed Mother, the easier and the faster it will be for God to be able to fulfill the plans that he has, that he has set into motion for a long time. I'd like also just to say on a, a very personal uh, uh, level that this solemnity is very special to me. On the 8th of December, 1999, I was a seminarian and a novice back in Uganda. This is when you do what they call a spiritual year. I was a novice in one part of the Uganda where there was a war actually going on. So the government was fighting this group of rebels who are terrorists and uh, Muslim. And uh, our novitiate was located in that same region. And it was located next to uh, an army barracks and also a big prison. And we had this big fear that, you know what, something, maybe the rebels may come down from the mountains. The mountains that you read about are called the, the, the mythical mountains of the moon, the Renzoris. Mm -hmm. They may come down and either attack the, the army or attack, uh, or attack the, the prison. So there was, we lived in that fear, and at some point, our novice masters had to write to the provincial, the U.S. province, because East Africa was under the U.S. province, who was Father Bill Dorot, who gave us a retreat, and they asked for permission that if anything was ever to happen, we could be able to be relocated to a different, safer place. And he granted the permission. And sure enough, only after a short, uh, maybe a month or two months, the rebels came down. They attacked the army and they attacked the prison. We had to flee the novitiate and we spent it hidden and hallowed in the bush. The whole night, the whole place was just converted into a war zone. Guns were just pounding the whole night. We could hear the artillery and we were just there just praying that God could be able to save us. So on the 8th of December, the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, I have all these memories about how broken and how wounded our world is. And I've never forgotten it. But I'm also still reminded every year that, you know what, a blessed mother will save you from all of that. As we continue our Mass today, may we ask our Lord to plant within us this desire for sanctity in our lives. And as we continue with our Mass today, may we ask the Lord that he grants us, that he grants each one of us uh, the need to walk in holiness and openness to any plans that he has. Amen. Amen. Amen.